Welcome back, my friends. Um, I am going to be recording multiple videos today, and I'm not going to change or do my hair. Or maybe, you know, you can figure out if I'm... <laughs> If this is just the outfit and the hairstyle that I do every time I make a video, good luck figuring that out. It's the former. Um, okay, <laughs> I have I actually have some notes for you this time because uh, otherwise I'll just end up going off on a tangent. So we're going to talk about how to fit writing into your daily schedule. If you have ever had the urge to be a writer um, or to be an author, how to get your book published, this is what you need to do to like make it fit into your daily schedule. So the first thing is to look at your time and then really just decide that you want to be a writer and you're going to make it fit regardless of what happens during the day. If you're on the road, um, if you have a full day of work, if you have a full day of running your kids, you can still decide that I am going to get 100 words written before I fall asleep tonight. It's, it's really just figuring out where it's going to fit in your life, in your schedule and in a way that that feels good for you so um taking time or looking at your time and deciding to cut out time wasting activities so social media tv maybe you watch one less episode of your favorite show um i think that we fill up our days just out of habit in an effort to feel productive and at the end of the day, we can look back and be like, oh, I didn't really actually accomplish anything. I've had laundry sitting on my living room for the last three days and it hasn't gotten folded. It hasn't gotten put away and my house is still a mess and my kids are a mess and I just didn't get anything accomplished that I wanted to. And yet we still feel busy all the time. So I think that you can fit whatever you want into your daily schedule. You just have to decide to do it and commit to it and then actually take the space one step further and make it happen. I see this all the time with people who are unhappy with how they look or their health and they say, well, I want to lose weight, I want to do stuff, but I just don't have the time. And then it becomes an excuse and a crutch that we lean on where, um, you know, you can decide to sacrifice 30 minutes of your sleep. You can decide to sacrifice 30 minutes of social media scrolling or 30 minutes of TV time. I've had days when I am really working on a writing project or just a, whatever project I happen to be working on that at that time and I don't watch any TV throughout the day. I never turn the TV on whether my kids are home or not and my kids are freaking out. They're like, mommy, we wanna watch TV. And I'm like, no, you don't need to watch TV. It's okay, you can find something else to do. You can color, you can play, you can use your imagination. Those are things that I personally believe in. Um, and I don't like, <laughs> I'm not one of those where it's like, my kids never watch TV um, or my kids exclusively watch TV. Like, I don't really care. Um, I don't care what you do. I don't care what you decide. Whatever you decide is right for your family. Like, awesome. That's great. I try not to cast judgment. That's just what works for my family and um, something that I personally believe in for my kids. So I wanted to <laughs> make that clear so nobody feels like I'm judging them uh, because I don't do that. And um, yeah, so clear your schedule of distractions. And I have a couple of ideas here for you because if you are a woman, if you're a mom, you might feel similarly where it's like everything falls on us. We're responsible for cleaning the house or it doesn't get done. We're responsible of making food for the kids or it doesn't get done. Um, we're just, we're the managers, we're the household leader, so to speak. Um, especially if you're a stay at home mom, it's like the husband goes outside of work, outside the home. He does the work, he does the making of the money. Um, and that puts a lot of stress and responsibility on our shoulders. And so I want to encourage you to like ask your hubby to be the one to take the kids to soccer. So you can have an hour of uninterrupted you writing time. Um, lean on your support people. Have your kids help you with chores. I was astounded when my kids knew how to put their clothes away out of the laundry basket. They knew how to load the dishwasher. They're six, four, and two. They're perfectly capable of performing regular chores around the household without it being that some grandiose thing or needing to throw a tantrum before it happens. They're perfectly capable. Um, and I promise you, if you put a little bit of responsibility on your kids' shoulders to 
be able to do some chores, they will surprise you. They know how to dress themselves. My two-year-old dresses herself every single day. And yes, sometimes she needs help with buttons and I'm more than willing to help her out with those things that she gets stuck on. But I love just sitting and watching her figure things out and, and what part of her body goes in what part of her shirt and her shorts and um, whatever else she decides that she's going to wear. Sometimes it's shorts and a skirt and a dress over top of it. And that's okay. I am just happy that she can dress herself. Uh, recently, she potty trained herself. And this was something that I was not expecting. I was fully prepared to like go all in and like have to take her into the bathroom every 30 minutes. No, I just, just she just decided one day, hey, my sisters use the big potty. I'm going to use the big potty. And she, from then on, refused to wear pull-ups, refused to wear diapers. Your kids will surprise you with how capable they are if you just give them the space to let it happen. So lean on your support people, whether it's your kids, your spouse, your mom, um, your friend, your neighbor, whoever it is. I recently had a bout with um, my mental health. I had a depressive episode and I literally had to call my mom and be like, mom, I need you to bring my family supper because I am sick and I had my period and I was just like not in a good mental health state. And so I was like, I need you to bring my family food because I am not capable of making them a meal right now. And I don't think that there's anything <clears throat> wrong with asking people for help when you need it because I did need it in that space. Another idea to help you clear your schedule of distractions is to make an easy meal ahead of time. So like throwing supper in the crock pot in the morning and then you have the rest of the evening where you, you know, your kids get home from work, from school, <laughs> sorry, your kids get home from school and you can just like, focus on doing what you need to do. You don't have to focus on making supper because you just pull the plates out, slop some of their supper onto their plates and you can just eat. You don't have to worry about making a three course dinner um, for an hour and a half of your time that opened up a whole bunch of your evening schedule. Sorry. Um, uh, okay. And then the last tip is to designate your writing time as writing time. And what I mean by this is when you sit down at your desk, it's not time to reorganize your desk. It's not time to clean your office. If you can see my office right now, you can see that it's a mess. Um, I have papers everywhere. I have notebooks everywhere. There's literally four notebooks with full pages of writing on them on my desk right now. There's multiple different books. There's different binders. There's, it's just, it's cluttered. It's messy. It's crazy. But my writing time is my writing time. That is my one hour, my 30 minutes, my 10 minutes, my 30 seconds of designated time that I get to focus on writing and being creative. And I just write down whatever ideas come to mind. And I think to fit writing into your daily schedule, it comes down to like, you have to clear the space out of your schedule. You have to have the time to like actually sit down and write. And then you need to force yourself to write. Even if the writing is bad, getting something written down is better than just staring at a blank page in intimidation because, well, what if my idea is not very good? What if it doesn't sound very good? What if people don't like what I write? And then we get all up in our head and we stop ourselves from writing when we finally have a moment to sit down and write. Don't be like that. I have done that in the past and I have decided to put away perfection out of my vocabulary and decided that getting it done is better than having something be perfect than making it be perfect the first time around because that's what second drafts are for. That's what third drafts are for. That's what editors are for. That's what proofreaders are for. It's their job to make sure that your writing sounds really good. Your job is just to get the writing done. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, my intention is to do a video every day for the next month or two, um, hopefully. And I will be recording them in bulk. So if you see me in this outfit, uh, that's because I recorded like five videos already today. Um, and also it's my favorite because I just got this shirt from Old Navy and they have a tall section. So I ordered it on Black Friday. I got it for like eight bucks, which I love. And this shirt is, this is Shikamaru from Naruto, and he's my favorite. So it's literally like my favorite outfit right now. So you're going to see a lot of it, and that's okay. I will see you in the next video.